connected. Amen. You, if you woke up this morning, you're already headed on the right path and having a good day. Amen. So I want to um, get us. We're going to be going and looking over to the first uh, first John. That's where we're going to be at today. This is something um, I tried to shape this here um, scripture. It's not one of these scriptures in the, you know that makes you want to shout and holler, amen. But I want us to look at this because the Father is um, just have been speaking to us in the time and season that that we're in. I have often said that the time that we're in, which is these la- these these latter days, is last time, or you say end time, is that the church is supposed to be training up the saints of God to know how to withstand during these last and evil days. And so the father had been speaking to me in reference to first John chapter two, verse 20, but let's read in this entire context. Amen. So let's, let's do this. If you look at it's very, um, this is where I get an unction of function for, we look at first John two and 20 um, and we're talking about because the Daniel generation is going to come forth and you can hear that message in its entirety if you go to our YouTube station uh, in reference to the father speaking through me on Sunday in reference to the anointing in reference to what posture we need to take as this generation of Daniels that God is calling for for such a time as this. And so it says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. This is what the Father is saying. So why he's telling us that you have an anointing from the Holy One, in capital letters, the Holy One, and you know all things. But let's go back up to verse 18, and we're going to read this um, in this whole, in this entire context. And I'm reading from my Bible here. I'm actually reading from my um, Kenneth Word of Faith Bible. Um, And the heading says here, the Antichrist. So here's, you know, a term that is, sometimes we don't talk about a whole lot, but we need to, I guess the father wanted us to be mindful and to look at this, amen. And it says, little children, it is the last hour, as you have heard that the Antichrist will come. Even now, there are many Antichrists. By this, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have remained with us. But they went out revealing that none of them were with us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. Now we see it comes in this context. And you know all things. I have written to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and because no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Whoever denies the Father and the Son is the Antichrist. We need to Set that over there on the side. That's some that's some strong that's some some strong verbiage there. We'll come back to it. No one who denies the son has the father. And the one who confesses the son has the father. Let that which you have heard from the beginning remain in you. If that which you have heard from the beginning remains in you you also will remain in the son and in the father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. I have written these things to you concerning those who deceive you, but the anointing, here we go. The anointing, which you have received from him, capital H H I M remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. For as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is, and is truth and is no lie. And just as it has taught you, remain in him. So I come by today as a prophet of God that the father is telling you to remain in him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That is how you are going 
to be able to withstand in these last and evil days. Thank you there, Vanders Park and Emmanuel, my, my Texan crew that's backing me up over there. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So let's look here. When we go back, we took what we want to pull out here. You see the anointing, and then you see about true believers that is there. And then he tell he says, remain in him. We are not in a season. Hear me, church folks. Hear me, body of Christ. That we have the opportunity to go in and out. If we look here, we see where individuals that hear me do evangelists. And, and that's the reason why we go out to, to win people to come in. Why? Because we, if we really want to look at it, we're trying to bring them from being anti-Christ over into Christ. Amen. Because we look, this is this is this is the words that is here. It says, if I have written, I have written to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? We have to understand that. So we individuals deny that Jesus is the Christ, and then we know that when the Antichrist reveals his true form and true colors amen that is what he's going to do but we have as the scripture said, it, as you keep read it says what he's already there and look we got so many antichrists all around now we're going to see the the true antichrist um will be come on and see hopefully i'm i'm up out of here by then amen hallelujah it says but whoever denies the father and the son is the Antichrist, we have to call it what it is. Many of us are coming against Antichrist spirits that are in individuals. So it says, no one who denies the son has the father, and the one who confesses the son has the father. Now, that's, that, seems very, that seems very strong because we know God, you know, God is love and or what have you. But you got to know when you're going out into the battlefield, when you're going and out into the world, you have to know what you're dealing with. So, so when you're doing your evangelism, uh, you're talking to individuals that are denying that uh, denying Jesus Christ, you have to call it what it is, and then you know how to effectively pray. Amen. But I want to pull out here, so now that we know that, then what he says, he's telling us, but the drop down to verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. Now, let's not take that. That means, you know, some people may t take this. That don't mean that you don't need to go to church. That don't mean that you can't listen. I'm my own person or what have you. Okay? No, that's not what that means. The anointing, what does it say? It says that what? The anointing, the Holy Spirit, it will what? Teach you all things. When you are anointed, amen, notice that it started off talking about the lion. Now, when the Father was speaking to me, um, I would have been sharing with individuals, here are three spirits that I want you to bind, rebuke, and loose from you in the name of Jesus. It is the spirit of deception. We see that comes along with it. And God is putting us in full context, even for me. The spirit of manipulation and the spirit of lying. Those are going to be some attributes that we're going to be seeing. Amen. So you want to make sure in the name of Jesus, that you do not have those dwelling within the inside of you. And you want to make sure that you don't want those spirits around you. Amen. So you're going to have to bind, you know, maybe you, you recognize that spirit in your workplace. You recognize what fact you have the power and authority to say, I bind the spirit of deception. I bind the spirit of manipulation. I bind the spirit of lying in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so you are anointed enough to do that. Anointed. You have an anointing that comes from the Father. Many times we hear individuals that, you know, um, I'm a prophet, but even I don't misuse that. I, I teach my people. Amen. It says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no, no harm. Now, you may not be a prophet, but God is, but you should have an anointing. Hallelujah. And the anointing, what we want, the anointing is what? It comes from, from Jesus. Or you say from the Holy Spirit. 
you have an anointing. You hear that there's there's a, and a reason why if people are lacking in the area of, a, of an anointing is because there's a price to be paid. There's some sacrifice. There's some discipline that requires for you to have an anointing. And if we truly was walking in our anointing, it will keep us from not being deceived. It will keep us from not being manipulated. It will also keep us to recognize the lying. I cannot tell you that how many times I can I can be, be able to tell this. You just like you know this person is just lying. You they, they're just lying. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so you're going to have to be able to understand that why because people can dress themselves up real good they know how to talk real good but when you are anointed you just you know my grandma say you know what my my, my i grew, grew my grew up with my grandmother and and, 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 and was around i love to have been around older people and they would like say you know what something in the milk ain't clean <laughs> you know that what that was that trying to say that something is off with this individual amen hallelujah to the lamb of god that see our, our ancestors may not had all the right extra saying the words all right but what they did have they had some wisdom and they had some understanding amen glory be to god so this is the time that we're in so you're going to need to have an anointing to be able to stand within these last and evil days i'm not talking about anointing to preach i'm talking about anointing to live by or anointing that will increase. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your, your, your discernment in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You need, you need to say that, but you need to say, I am anointed. Glory be to God. I am anointed in the name of Jesus. Now let's go over here. When we look at that, and I touched on this just a, um, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Let's go look over here and here's a here's a little caveat so it can help help you out so you can Isaiah I just love something I just get you get one text one scripture let's look here at Isaiah 27 Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 amen you need it to I am anointed I'm very good to tell you when you write make sure you have that on your I am in your I am statements amen because there's a lot of people functioning with, 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 with skills and talents. But how about having an anointing? It says, in that day, his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Woo! You know, everybody know I love to use the anointing oil. When we are what we are, we anoint individuals in the name of Jesus. I have fire oil that's that's been prayed over during the time I was doing. I'm fasting for forty days. You can call you can call the church so you can you can order that. Amen. It will put the devil on the run. Anointing oil, anoint where you live at. Anoint your children. Anoint anoint your cat, your dog, everything. Amen. What the, the anointing is a point of contact in the name of Jesus because what the anointing is going to destroy and break the yokes off of you in the name of Jesus if you look at other translations it, it, it says that because you become you become so so fat amen and the acronym I have for that is that those of you that are faithful and that you are available to God right you you when you're available to God you're going to have anointing then you've been you've been appointed to have an anointing, amen? And then because you're anointed, you're gonna have abundance. Those are three A's he gave me in there for fact. You don't expound it now. And then the T is what? Teachable. So see how those that have anointing, you're gonna be what? It's faithful, available, and teachable. That is how you develop to have an anointing of God on your life. Now we see why the anointing is so low because in these latter days, it's hard to find people to be faithful. It's hard to find people to be available to God. And it's hard to find people to be teachable. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So if you want anointing, it's you, just because you get a business card don't make you anointed. Just because you Photoshop your picture and post up on Instagram and all of that and put your fancy words, hallelujah, that doesn't make you anointed. Hallelujah. It is the anointing that 
is going to be able what? To destroy the yoke in the name of Jesus. Fasting, we're in the season of time. Fasting brings about an anointing, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. I don't know, the Father is having me keep reading, the Holy Spirit keep reading my spirit over here to go over to John 14. So let me just see over here to John 14. I'm just going to be obedient to go over to John 14. And it says here in John 14, it says, Jesus, the way to the Father. Hallelujah. We got to bring all these antichrist spirits over to the Father. Glory be to God. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That's where I am and you will be also. You know where I am going and you know the way. This is Jesus talking. Then Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. See, here it is, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. There's no other way. It ain't going to happen by Buddha. It ain't going to happen by, by anything. Unless they come through what? He says, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And then Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. And that is sufficient for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you such a long time and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father. So how can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe? See, you're going to have to believe that I am in the father and the father is in me. And what did I say? It says what? We are in him over in first John chapter two it said the words that i say to you i do not speak on my own authority but the father who lives in me does the work listen what great is jesus christ that's in you than satan that is of the world believe me that i am in the father and the father is in me or else believe me on account of the works themselves truly truly i say to you he who believes in me will do the works that I do also. Hallelujah. Listen, see, you will do what? He says, and he will do what? Greater works than these because I am going to my father. We are to do greater works than Jesus. Jesus didn't have, he, he, he didn't have, he knew what his assignment was. Then when he went, he has a left what? An anointing. There is, and my spiritual father, Pastor Parsi said this all the time. There is not one anointing that leaves the earth. Amen. Why? Because the anointing comes from Jesus Christ. Where you see it on Smith Wigglesworth, where you see it on Lesser Summerrock, where you see it on All Right. There is not one anointing that leaves the earth. Amen. Verse 13. I will do whatever you ask in my name. Here we go. Whatever you ask in my name that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. I said, uh, only believe. So what is it that we're, we need to get when you ask in his name? And I got a little note here. I'm just going over here because, you know, there are certain times I use different, different Bibles. And I have here my little notes on the side to go to John. 20, go to John 16, 23, and it says, on that day, you will ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say to you, wherever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Go, now you go over to John 16, he said the same thing. So we have to what? Ask in his name. It says, in my name, and ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. So we need to what? In the carrying your anointing, then when you use the name of Jesus, it's going to bring about a greater authority. So it is worth you being faithful. It's worth you being faithful to God. It's worth you being available to God. It's worth you being teachable in the name of Jesus. What it's saying, the Holy Spirit says what? I will teach you what? 
all things. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So we are not, we're supposed to flow in greater works. We're, we got one side, I've been in this John 10, 10, amen. This John 10, 10 that we've been walking through for the John 10, 10 mandate throughout this here um, time. And what it says, Satan comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, well, but I have come to give you life and to give it more abundantly. He's come to give you what? Abundant life. Why? That abundant life. That abundant life is brings about what? Your, the anointing is going to bring about the abundance of Jesus Christ in your life in the name of Jesus. So here it is. The father is telling us. He's just saying, listen, I want you, you know, walk in your anointing. Your anointing is going to guide you against the spirit of deception of the Antichrist, the spirit of manipulation of the Antichrist, and the spirit of lying of the Antichrist. That, that's, that is the spirit. Your anointing, amen? And then you're going to use the name of Jesus. And this is what he said. He said, if you ask anything in my name, not prophet's name, amen? Not Amanda's name, not Ben Parker's name, not Bishop, in my name, whose name? Jesus. So when we come before him and we believe, he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He said that in John 14, amen, starting at verse 13 and 14, and then I had I had notes over here on the side that he spoke to me. I said, by the name on 4, 5, 2018. And I had written here in, in my writing, John 6, 23. Then we go over to John 6, 23. And he says it again. I'm excited to it. Therefore, you now have started, but I will see you again. And your heart will rejoice. And no one will take your joy from you. On that day. You will ask me nothing. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy will be full in the name of Jesus. And then he, he God goes on from there. I know we get ready to run. I'm getting ready to run out of time. Amen. But then the next thing he said, he says, God tells us what I have overcome the world. So if he has overcome the world, but then he tells you, amen, that greater works, greater works that you're supposed to be doing. Why? Because you are anointed. He's given you anointing. Listen, that when we talk about the anointing, it, it swells. And you talk about you, you, you smear, you know, the fragrance, the, the, the anointing, what? Destroy and break every yoke off of me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There is anointing that we need to walk in during this season. I want to say, I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. And I am appointed for such a time as that. I feel the glory of God filling up my room right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of the anointing. Glory be to God. And then I know I'm hearing in my spirit. Hurry, let's see if I got enough time to go over here to, to Psalms 92. Hallelujah. Let's see if I can get Psalms 92 over here before we, before they, before we get off. Look, Psalms 92. Um, and here's what I'm going to start at verse. I'm going to start at verse, verse 9. No, I'm going to start at verse 8. But you, O oh Lord, are on high forever. For your enemies, O oh Lord. For your enemies shall perish. All those who do iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn, you have exalted like the horn of a wild ox. You have anointed me with fresh oil. Hallelujah in the, in the name of Jesus. You anointed me with fresh oil. My eyes also shall see the downfall of my enemies. And my ears shall hear the doom of my wicked adversary. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Hallelujah. Get ready to go to Florida. That's confirmation. I was born in Miami, Florida. And grow like the cedar of a Lebanon. And those that are what? Planted in the house of the Lord. What did I just say? Get planted in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall flourish in what? The course of our God. The enemy try to keep you out of the church. Hallelujah. 
and they shall bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be filled with vitality and fullness to show that the Lord is upright. And they say, I'm out of time. I come by to tell you, you are anointed, and Jesus is Lord. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, feel free to partner with us by sowing a seed at gbfic.org or mailing a check to Morning Glory at 1126 Northeast Delta School Road in Lee Summit, Missouri, 64064. If you need special prayer of any kind, please feel free to call us at 816-795-1900. Do you qualify for Medicaid and live in Missouri? Then you may qualify for the Consumer Directed Services Program. Enrolling in CDS means you, the Medicaid participant.